Hi friends, I'm Chevy, and every day I come down to my shop and I record a little show that I call The Daily Shed. I wanted a way to add some live sound effects to the show, so today we're going to make one of these out of a set of these. To make it all work, we are going to use this tiny little controller from Adafruit Industries called the Adafruit Audio FX Soundboard. Now this little guy is a microcontroller with 11 input switches as well as internal storage. You simply put your files on here, ground out a pen, and it plays a sound. Now I got this idea from watching this video from Bob Claggett and I like to make stuff. Bob built a unique horn for his truck with a loudspeaker and I saw that video and said this is exactly what I needed to build my soundboard. So we have 12 volts coming in through the cigarette lighter adapter which splits out to the converter that turns it into 5 volts which feeds the USB and powers the soundboard. The audio out from that goes into the amplifier which is also powered from 12 volts and then the output of the amplifier goes out to the speaker. And that's the system. So we're going to leverage this to play our sounds with the amplifier from the speakers and build something out. But first we need a plan. Following Bob's lead, we're going to split off of the 12 volt input voltage to the audio amplifier to power the Adafruit audio FX through a 5 volt regulator. I'll use the original quarter inch input jack from the amplifier to grab the sounds off the audio FX. A few momentary input switches will trigger the sounds and then we can test the circuit. The audio effects does not come with the header pins installed, so I've got to solder those on quickly before the rest of the project can begin. Okay, so this is what I was afraid of. This is our little amp circuit and the volume potentiometer and the on off switch are both uh, physically connected here. I'm gonna have to unsolder these and make jumpers. Okay, so what I've done here was desoldered some of the components. Um, you can see I removed the potentiometer that was here. This is going to be the volume control and I wanna be able to put it in a different place, so I'll just have to solder some leads on there. I desoldered the power um, a adapter that was back here, I think. So we need to, again, solder some leads to it uh, to run it to a different place. And I desoldered the little green LED, which I wanna reuse for the power LED. Uh, I was going to desolder the switch but I really don't see a reason since I don't want to reuse this switch. And because I'm going to be splitting off of the power in to the five volt uh, power regulator for the Adafruit, I'm just gonna switch the input voltage coming straight out of our little uh, thing here. So this will all just get sealed up in the case with the, this power switch stuck in the on position. What I'm using here, in case you were wondering, is just a breadboard jumper. These are wires that have um, a pin on one side and a female on the other for using in a breadboard. You can plug them into holes. They work conveniently for this application because they already have a stud to poke back through the hole and solder. Because it's a stereo, the four audio wires are paired inside of an insulator. So here I'm soldering the first pair together and closing it in heat shrink, and then I'll solder the outer pair around that and enclose both in a second layer of heat shrink. Yeah. 
so here's the test circuit completed. We have our power in, which is going to our massively beefy power switch here, which is powering the amplifier circuit as well as it's split off to power this little five volt DC regulator, which provides five volts to our little Adafruit board. We have our potentiometer wired up, um, our LED indicator light. I have one speaker just twist paired together for right now, just for testing purposes. I have the original audio in wired back in using the quarter inch jack to take the sounds from this board. So theoretically, all we need to do now is add a sound to this board and short the pin and we should get some noise out of our speaker. Power's hooked up, potentiometer's hooked up, power light, speaker, make sure the wires are out of the way. Let's turn everything on. Adafruit has power. Theoretically, we run a jumper from ground to pin one and we should get a sound. Now that we have this whole mess uh, together and working and we know that it does what we want it to do, it's time to build a case for this thing. For now, I'm going to keep the case extremely simple. And in the future, I have some ideas on how to upgrade it, but I really just want to make this thing work. So if you're looking for some amazing woodworking tips here, I'm just going to breeze through this. It's, it's the next day, and um, I, last night I, I just got in this groove and I started doing my thing and then I realized I, you know it was like midnight and I'm working late and I've completely forgot to record a whole bunch of the build process of what's going on here. So I just wanted to take a minute and update you. This place is a disaster now. Uh, what I have going on here is I made the box. Um, you got to see me cut these sides out and then I took these to the sander to get this edge that I cut on the bandsaw nice and flat. I then cut out a back piece and a front piece. Uh, they are not yet trimmed to um, or sanded flush with the rest of the box. I will do that later. But I also took a roundover bit and rounded these. A nice round profile on those. Um, yeah. The inside of the box, I've got the cutout for the USB extension cable and the power jack roughed in. I'm going to leave these screws exposed because I kind of like the look of them. The bottom that I cut is out of three quarter inch, or no, this is half inch plywood. It's actually like extreme overkill for this project, but it'll go in there, uh, something like that. And I think I'm just going to leave it. I, I was thinking about maybe replacing it with the Luon, which is what I'm using for the top, which by the way, I cut that also. But I think I'm gonna leave it, it's kind of weighty, and that'll give me a place to screw the components securely, as well as I'm gonna pick up some rubber feet to put down here. So I think we're gonna leave that. I just need to uh, glue in some strips in here to screw this from the bottom. Uh, and then I've got the top. 
The top is just a piece of Luon that I've sanded nice and smooth. Um, and then we're gonna have to lay everything out on here, drill it, cut it out, and get everything ready to go in the box. And the way I'm going to mount it is the same as the way I'm gonna do the back. So I wanna glue some strips of walnut down here for the back to sit on, and I'm gonna glue some strips of walnut along this angle so the Luon lays in there. And then I want to ease these edges. I'm not going to round them over like I did the front and the back. I'm just going to ease them a little bit with some sandpaper or maybe a small hand plane uh, just to break them and make them a little bit more uh, smooth. And then I need to clean all this up and um, then put it all together. While those bits are drying, it's time to figure out how we're going to mount everything on the front piece. Here I'm using a pencil rubbing technique to make a pattern for the speaker cutout that I can transfer easily. And this is just trial and error. It, it's more about aesthetics instead of precision, so I'm not really worried too much about the layout. Here's a tip, Christmas paper, way cheaper than craft paper. Just pick it up like the weekend after Christmas and you can have a lifetime supply of table paper. I'm wiping everything down with mineral spirits first to help remove excess sawdust. So it's the next day, it's Monday today, and I really wanted to show this on today's episode. So I've got to get it done. I'm homesick, I, don't, I feel terrible, but I'm just, I got to get it down here, I got to get this finished. Uh, after much deliberation, I decided to use shellac on the walnut instead of oil, just because oil takes time to cure, and this actually turned out absolutely gorgeous. This is three coats of shellac, two without sanding, then sanding in a top coat. It looks amazing. I'm really, really happy with the finish. So it's time to put this thing together and see what happens. That looks awesome! Oh my gosh, this thing is gonna be so cool. I'm going to install the USB cable with epoxy so this tape will help protect the finish.
what I did here was just connect all of the ground pins together because all the circuits on the Adafruit Audio FX already have a built-in pull-up resistor. So all I need to do is short them to ground. So I just daisy chained all of the grounds into one pin for when I put it in the box. Is I've made some standoffs by taking a bigger piece of heat shrinking and shrinking it and so it makes it nice and stiff like a straw and I'm gonna use that as a standoff and just use some wood screws down through the board to hold it into the plywood underneath So the last thing to do, we already have the applause. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, the last thing I need to do is plug the rest of the sounds in. If you saw in the video, there's a USB extension cable that I epoxied in right here. So this should plug in and we transfer the files. Larger files seem to take a while. Okay. Once the files are on there, um, I'm going to create one of these, I'm going to rename to T04, that's the fifth pin, latch. And what that's going to do is make the sound repeat until I press the button again, theoretically. So let's uh, see how my soundboard works. <laughs> Wrong. We've heard the applause. Gotta have a laugh track, right? And then for sappy stuff. Let me tell you guys a little story about making this little box. It took me three days. I thought it would only be a few hours. Boy, was I wrong. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope to see you Monday through Friday right here on the Daily Shed.